Imagine staring into a mirror that doesn't just reflect light, but time itself. A mirror so powerful it doesn't show you your own face, but the face of the universe when it was still taking its very first breath. That's what the James Webb Space Telescope was designed to do. To peer back into cosmic dawn, to catch the first sparks of creation. But what it found when it looked deeper than anything before it wasn't infancy. It wasn't a cosmic cradle. It was a contradiction. An impossibility written in light. And what Webb revealed hasn't just stunned astronomers, it has rattled the very bones of modern physics. For decades, scientists thought they had a solid grasp of cosmic history. First came the Big Bang, then a long dark age, followed by the slow, methodical birth of stars, then galaxies, then planets and life. The rule was simple. The further back you look, the simpler things should be. Wisps of hydrogen, faint glimmers of light, scattered chaos. But when Webb aimed its golden mirrors at a patch of sky so dark it was thought to be almost empty, what it found shouldn't have existed. Not a smudge. Not a faint haze. But a galaxy. Fully formed. Rotating. Organized. Alive with stars. And it wasn't a lone miracle. As more data streamed in, more galaxies appeared from that ancient fog, galaxies with spiral arms, dense star clusters, and even monstrous black holes burning at their cores. Not primordial chaos. Not first attempts. But finished architecture. It was as if the cosmic clock had been wound forward billions of years too soon. And with each new image, one question grew louder. What if everything we thought we knew about the beginning, is wrong? When Webb first captured one of these impossibly mature galaxies more than 13 billion light years away, scientists expected to see another faint smear barely distinguishable from background noise. Instead, staring back was elegance. Spiral arms curled like ribbons, bright clusters shining like lanterns, a dense core throbbing with energy. This wasn't a galaxy being born. It was already thriving. According to the textbooks, that level of organization should have taken billions of years. Yet here it was, only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. It was like finding a skyscraper standing tall in a world where the blueprints for bricks hadn't even been drawn yet. To understand why this breaks physics, you have to understand how galaxies are supposed to evolve. At first, matter in the young universe was thin and scattered. Slowly, gravity pulled it into clouds, those clouds collapsed into stars, and only after hundreds of millions of years would those stars clump together into the first galaxies. But Webb's discoveries suggest the universe didn't crawl toward complexity. It sprinted. These galaxies weren't fumbling into existence, they were already built, already old, already full of stories written in their stars. And the more Webb looked, the more impossible it got. The telescope spectrometers, tools that split light into its chemical fingerprints, revealed heavy elements inside these galaxies. Oxygen. Carbon. Iron. These aren't primordial gases. They're forged in the fiery deaths of massive stars and spread only after those stars explode as supernovae. Which means not only had the first stars already been born and died, but they'd done so multiple times. Entire cycles of stellar birth and death had played out, not over billions of years, but within a fraction of cosmic history. Even more astonishing, these are not just star ingredients. They're the raw materials for planets. For atmospheres. For oceans. For life. The early universe, it seems, wasn't a silent nursery. It was a furnace, burning, collapsing, exploding, recycling, so fast it makes our models look like fairy tales. And then came the discovery that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. A supermassive black hole, billions of times heavier than the sun, 
sitting at the heart of a galaxy less than 400 million years after the Big Bang. Today, such giants are already mysteries. But back then? Cosmologically absurd. Black holes are supposed to grow slowly, first from collapsing stars, then feeding on dust and gas for billions of years. Even the most aggressive simulations can't explain something so huge, so soon. This wasn't a baby black hole that grew too fast. This looked like a monster that had been there since the beginning, fully grown. Faced with this, scientists are now exploring radical new theories. Primordial black holes formed directly from density ripples in the infant universe. Exotic physics driven by dark matter that fast-tracked cosmic growth, or laws of time and gravity that behaved differently than we've ever imagined. These aren't tweaks to our models. They are rewrites. But the contradictions didn't stop with galaxies and black holes. Webb's ultra-sensitive instruments detected patterns, repeating ratios, spiral symmetries, fractal-like geometries, woven into the distribution of matter itself. What we once thought was random turbulence began to look, design. Not in the artistic sense, but in the mathematical sense. Structure encoded into the very architecture of spacetime. As if the universe wasn't chaos unfolding, but a script already written, with fingerprints still visible across the stars. And then came something even harder to dismiss. In a supposedly empty void, Webb detected faint traces of complex organic molecules. Not simple gases, but carbon-rich chains, the seeds of amino acids, the very precursors to life. And they weren't clinging to planets or stars. They were drifting freely, carried through space for 13 billion years. Which means the ingredients for biology weren't a late addition to the universe. They were there almost from the start. Life, it seems, might not be an accident. It might be a feature, built into the universe itself. The strangest image of all was one scientist nicknamed the flower. Six galaxies arranged like petals around a central mass, equally spaced, rotating in near-perfect synchronization. The odds of this happening naturally are microscopic. And yet, there it was, a cosmic mandala, frozen in ancient light. Some said it was gravitational lensing. Others blamed coincidence. But for a small, unsettled few, the symmetry was too perfect. Too deliberate. A structure not just observed, but perhaps placed, as though waiting for eyes like ours to find it. And then came the most disturbing speculation of all, that the act of looking may be changing what we see. In quantum physics, the observer effect says particles can behave differently when measured. But what if that principle scales? What if the universe itself is responsive to attention? Some web images appear subtly altered between data runs, patterns shifting, alignments bending, as if reality itself was aware of being observed. Could it be that by building web and peering into cosmic dawn, we didn't just discover the past, we awakened it? The James Webb Space Telescope has shown us galaxies too mature, black holes too massive, chemistry too advanced, and patterns too precise to fit the universe we thought we understood. These revelations don't just stretch our theories. They snap them. And what rises in their place isn't just science. It's something deeper, stranger, a sense that the cosmos may not only hold answers but intentions. Maybe we didn't just find the memory of the universe. Maybe, for the first time, the universe remembered us. So the question is no longer just, what did Webb see? The question is, what saw Webb? If this unsettled you, if the timing felt too sharp, the patterns too deliberate, the revelations too synchronized, you're not alone. Subscribe, because the next signal could already be on its way. Turn on notifications, because the universe may not be done whispering back.